everyone, this is Heather with Stealing Hearts Homestead. If you have not done so already, please do go ahead and subscribe down below. So this video is about the beef jerky that I made, well actually rabbit jerky. Um, so this is my end product of rabbit jerky and it smells so good. I used a beef jerky recipe um, to make this and I didn't put in the pepper just because I really don't care for pepper, um, but it tastes so good. Like, so good. And look at it, it's beautiful. It's so, oh, it smells so good. So I definitely recommend it. It took a while because my, um, the pressure cooker is a little small because it's Ninja Foodie, so it only has like a tray like this big in order to put stuff on. Um, but it turned out really, really, really well. And I would recommend watching it because the recipe is made for beef jerky. Um, so I was checking on it a lot more to make sure that it didn't uh, dry out too much. So I did have to really watch that. So if you do make it yourself, be sure that you are keeping an eye on that because it tells you to put it on high for four hours. And that's just gonna be way too long um, for rabbits. At least what I found with mine, it was gonna be way too long. I think I did like around two hours, maybe a little more, two to three hours is where I ended up cutting it off at, and it turned out beautifully. So if you do make it yourself, just be sure you're checking on it every once in a while. Um, if you do check on it, take the pieces out, let them sit for about 10 minutes, and just kind of peel it, play with them, make sure that they're not, you know, still leaking any liquid, or that they're not super, like, fragile or break, because that's definitely what you don't want. Um, so, just give it a try and kind of play around with it and see what works for you. And I hope you like it. I, it, it tastes really, really good. So you'll definitely have to give it a try if you've never tried rabbit jerky. I'm actually gonna take some of these to work and, uh, and see if I can get some people to try it because I think they'd be really surprised what rabbit tastes like because right now they're kind of, they don't really understand why someone would wanna eat a rabbit. <laughs> so I think if they were to try this, they would totally get it. All right, well, thank you for tuning in. We'll hop into the recipe. All right, so I am going to try making some rabbit jerky. So it calls for some pretty simple ingredients, but then some also some things I didn't have. So I did have to order two things off Amazon because I just didn't have them because I really don't make jerky very often. I haven't made jerky in a really long time, but I'm gonna try it with this new Ninja. So it calls for brown sugar. Then we have our paprika. Soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> um, onion powder, garlic powder, the meat tenderizer I did not have, and either the liquid smoke, so I had to order those things. I got them off of Amazon and had them delivered to the house. Um, and then obviously you need your meat. I am using some rabbit meat. This particular recipe calls for two pounds. I do not have two pounds. This is just um, the side piece of meat that's connected to the ribs and everything that we don't really have a purpose for. Um, so I'm gonna make it with this. So we're gonna get to it and hopefully it turns out okay. I am interested to try because I've never had jerky that was rabbit before. So let's give it a go. So since I don't have two pounds of meat, I went ahead and did the math um, to make it so everything is basically one fourth of the size um, because like I said, I don't have two pounds of meat. I only have about one fourth of it. So we're gonna make it with that. So this recipe is from allrecipes.com. It is called Doc's Best Jerky. I'll go ahead and leave a link down to it below. So it says to place the beef strips in the bottom of a large bowl. So we'll go ahead and use this since I don't have very much. We'll go ahead and place them at the bottom. And like I said, these are just the strips um, that are connected to the ribs. Okay, so next it says to 
for soy sauce, Worcestershire, liquid smoke, wow, pretty much everything, uh, over the beef, and then to mix to ensure all the meat is evenly coated. So I guess you don't even mix this in a bowl first. You just go ahead and sprinkle it all over the meat. Okay. First thing we have is soy sauce. And that calls for one fourth of a cup if you have two pounds of beef. Um, so in this case, it's gonna be one tablespoon. Worcestershire that calls for two tablespoons so we're basically gonna eyeball this one because there's really no good conversion so we're gonna eyeball half a tablespoon I think that's about half okay and then the next one is liquid smoke. I'm gonna rinse this. Okay. So it calls for two tablespoons of liquid smoke. Which again, I'm gonna have to eyeball, okay. do one half a tablespoon okay that looks like about one and a half Should be done with a half a tablespoon. Nope, I lied. Okay. <laughs> so next we're gonna do brown sugar. I like to keep my brown sugar in a food bag um, and it's vacuum sealed. I've had this for quite a while and when I wasn't putting it in anything, brown sugar is getting really, really hard. Um, this way it stays really, really loose and I can keep using it instead of having to throw it away. Only downside is I have to break into the bag and then I'm gonna have to reseal it later. So this one's gonna be a little more tricky because it calls for two tablespoons of brown sugar, which as you know, brown sugar has to be packed down. So I'm gonna have to try to pack it into my one tablespoon. I only need half of the tablespoon. So that's where it's going to be tricky. I think that's about half. We're going to hope anyways. Give it a little more for good measure. Okay. Can't go wrong with sugar, right? Um, okay. Then we have two teaspoons of salt, which I don't have over here. I'm going to go ahead and grab that real fast. That's gonna be pretty easy. That just means one half of a teaspoon of salt. Okay. One half. We have ground pepper. I don't really care for pepper. I'm not gonna use it. Uh, then we have one teaspoon meat tenderizer. So we'll do one fourth of a teaspoon of meat tenderizer. all over. One teaspoon onion powder and garlic powder. So that means one fourth. Okay. 
One teaspoon of paprika. So I will also be one fourth since we're making one fourth of the recipe. Okay, sprinkle that on here. All right, then it says mix to assure all meat is evenly coated. Cover the marinade in the refrigerator for eight hours. Okay. Swirl this around a bit. It's weird to me that it didn't say to mix this in a bowl first, so that way you were sure all of the spices got on everything. I'm also kind of questioning whether or not I should put this in like a baggie, which I think I'm probably going to do like a sandwich baggie, so that way it kind of sits more in juices because right now since I don't have very much there's not a whole lot of juice going on there so I think I'm gonna do that um, but it says to go ahead and put it in the refrigerator for eight hours or overnight we're gonna go ahead and leave it for overnight like that I for good measure I'm just gonna put it in a sandwich baggie the juice in here. I think that marinade is pretty well worked in. We're gonna go ahead now and leave it overnight and we'll come back in the morning and finish this up. So you can see it has been marinating. It looks good. So I'm gonna grab my Ninja. Check on the instructions here. So it says to remove from the bowl and place between two pieces, two pieces of plastic wrap around one H thickness. Why? Arrange meat strips on a tray in the dehydrator and dry in your dehydrator at the highest setting. I don't understand the plastic wrap part. I think I'm just going to put it... I have some parchment paper. What do I have? What do I have? What do I have? I have non-stick parchment paper. So, I'll work through here. Okay. Not going to be able to fit all of them on here. a very small dehydrating space. But it's better than having nothing. on there. 
So I'll be able to do both of them by the end of the day because I only have 10 pieces. So, or maybe nine pieces. I think I lost one. Um, it's probably in with my other meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this in my dehydrator. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. We're going to hit dehydrate. So this is on high. I don't really know, how do you, temperature. That must be high. No, that's as high as it goes. Um, and then time, we only want, oh, that went really fast. We only want four hours. And we'll hit start goes so we will come back four hours from now and see what type of jerky we have how exciting <laughs> 